4th of July. We're supposed to be celebrating our independence, not our ignorance. Yeah. 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 This whole conversation has been an insult to the very idea of this day, and I won't have it in my house. Well, I'm sorry, Mama. I just don't think the government is being fair in importing all those foreign cars. It almost put us out of business. Hell, can I help it if all the good jokes are about farmers? <laughs> Coming out of firefighters now, get to it, Daddy! Hit it. Let's go! <laughs> my favorite part of the parade are the horses. They're so regal. Regal, my fanny. They poop out there on the street in front of God and everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, Philip, you could never smell the roses without getting a thorn up your nose. What's that supposed to mean? I thought you weren't supposed to mention roses. Yeah, Mark. Hey, you were talking about roses, not me. <laughs> what told us about roses? Uh, nothing, Daddy. I love your roses, Daddy Fletcher. Oh, I love them too, Daddy. Yeah, that's why your whole front yard's covered in asphalt. Mark, you weren't supposed to mention roses, not asphalt. Well, Daddy, it just broke my heart to see that machine bulldozing all those beautiful rose bushes. You snitch! Now your front yard looks like the used car lot you work at. Wish you'd have told me about that, Philip. I'd have saved them. Well, I needed a place to park my new van more than I needed a place for more of your rose cuttings. And I threatened to pay the debt that he told you. Then we all know how frightened he is of you. And, and besides, Daddy, I could just see you after your operation shoveling up that whole front yard. Now, those rose bushes are not worth another heart attack. Right, Mama? Right. Oh, you both know as well as I do. Your Daddy has a mind of his own. Oh, you wouldn't say no to him if he wanted to jump off the Capitol. Thank God. Mark, I wish you hadn't bought those firecrackers. Yeah, they're against the law in the city. Well, at first he buys Jason a gun for Christmas. Now he's bought Debbie firecrackers. I think what he's trying to do is put me in an early grave. <laughs> yeah, and what I do, I'm going to get me a younger model. Sit on it, Mark. <laughs> Remember Louise Watson? Firecracker took off three fingers on her left hand. Oh, thanks a lot, Philip. Yeah, thanks a lot, Philip. When she married Curtis Hewlett, he had to put her, her, the wedding ring on her little finger. She worries and worries and worries. I remember right now when you used to get quite a bang out of firecracker you said, Daddy, whose side are you on? Well, I wasn't aware we were choosing upside. Well, we are when you take his side. Would you like some more cake, Mark? He's already had two pieces. What are you, the keeper of the cake? You know, Helen used to bake like this. Well, I had to give up baking when I had to let your pants off for the third time this year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I married him, he had a 32-inch waist. Well, you're not the right to beauty I'm married either, not by 100 pounds or not. I've had two kids. What have you had? <laughs> what are you laughing at, son of blubber? With that, with that bear gut, you look like you're expected. <laughs> Philip, I'll tell you what you can do with those wieners. <laughs> Using yourself. I taught high school, remember? I scrubbed worse than that off the girls' lavatory walls. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> 
vasectomy for me. She wanted one for me. Well, I just don't think it's fair for the woman to be the only one responsible for something she doesn't care that much about in the first place. <laughs> no, she'd rather sit around the house and read about it than do it. She sits around the house and reads those trashy romance novels all day. Everything's burning thighs and hard nipples. <laughs> Goes on for one more word we're leaving. Right in front of my mom. You don't respect a damn thing. Well, what do you respect besides the almighty dollar? Uh, how about your first wife and your two grown kids? Do you respect them? You're a son of a bitch, Mark. I'm sorry, Mama, but he is a son of a bitch. I agree with Philip. Are we voting? <laughs> Too much to drink. The is a very private thing, Sam. I know how you'd vote. Uh, excuse me. Oh, I wish you didn't like drinking so much. Well, what do you expect when you meet your husband at the Broken Spoke? <laughs> <laughs> Mark has not been the same since Vietnam. You know it. I never liked that cushy woman. <laughs> Happy Independence Day, everybody! <laughs> Happy poor Viola! <laughs> a winner, Viola! Oh, well, no, thank you, Philip. I'm on a diet. I just lost 200 pounds of ugly fat. Oh, how did you do that? <laughs> My divorce just came through. <laughs> You don't drive people around looking at $100,000 homes in a Ford. <laughs> Truth is, I got my eye on a Cranberry Mercedes. <gasps> the crouch. <laughs> Business must be good. Good? Hell, it's fantastic. Well, didn't I tell you five years ago to get into real estate? Yeah. Did I? Well, I'm an independent woman. Is that why you shed, Fred? Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> cheers, cheers! Cheers! I make more in a month than he did in a year. <laughs> Any woman who thinks she has to be saddled, pun intended, <laughs> <laughs> with any man today is crazy, especially here in Boomtown, USA. Why don't you people keep up with the times? We are the fourth most desired city to live in in the nation. Thousand people a week. Well, all of those people have to live someplace. <laughs> and that transfers into lots of money for lots of people. <laughs> have some more champagne, Sam. In fact, I stopped by today to offer you a little independence. How about selling the old homestead? I am prepared to offer you $100,000 for this old place. I bet that's 10 times more than you originally paid for it. What do you want with this old place, Viola? Well, it's, it's just a hunch, Sam. I believe in downtown. If I can hold on to it long enough, it just might make a profit. It's a chance you take in the real estate business. Besides, Sam, if anybody deserves a break, you do. She's right, Daddy. Yeah, Betty. For once, my was right. You and Mama deserve a break. Call it's acting up again, Sam. Well, I fixed that thing only yesterday. You can't fix a toilet with a paper clip. Hi, Viola. Mark, Viola's just offered Daddy a hundred thousand dollars for this whole place. What do you think of that? I think you ought to jump on it. That's what I think. Have some champagne, Mark. I'm celebrating my Independence Day. <laughs> My divorce just became final. In that case, cheers. <laughs> well, how about it, Sam? Uh, you know, I read in the paper in the States recently where they discovered some prehistoric fossils while they were excavating down around Congress Avenue. Uh, those old fossils stopped progress for a whole week. Now, that's how I envisioned martyrs. <laughs> <laughs> They'll dig us up someday and say, 
Uh huh. So this is how people used to live back then. Uh, Daddy, Bible is offering you a chance to get out from under this old place. Mama, what do you think? Whatever your daddy decides. Oh, Margaret. This is the 80s. Women think for themselves. Half this place is yours. Well, Viola, do you want to buy half this place? <laughs> <laughs> well, Sam, if you change your mind, here's my card. Personally, I think you're a fool not to take the money and run. Everybody else on the whole block sold out. Why, I sold Captain Hunt's place next door a long time ago. And now he's living in a retirement home. I bet it's a nice retirement home, Sam. Well, I've got to run. <laughs> I'm uh, showing some Iranian students a million dollar house out by the lake today. <laughs> <laughs> Japanese students buying condos right and left. You would be amazed at the amount of foreign money that flows into this town because of the university. <laughs> well, happy Independence Day, everybody. Happy Independence Day, by the way. Uh, Mark, by the way, there's some plumbing problems in number five, Hollow Glen. The apartment's empty, so just go in any time. Oh, he'll be glad to take care of that for you, Viola. <laughs> Well, let's keep all our business among friends, right? <laughs> Happy Independence Day! Happy Independence Day! Daddy, you ought to let Viola buy this place. Let them bulldoze it. Like the roses? Make a damn fine parking lot, Sam. Hell, you're right downtown. Well, Vernon Eagle got six you parking lots, and, and, and he's raking it in. You just put down some asphalt, paint the line zone, put up a drop-in money box, and watch the money pour in. You don't even need an attendant. Parking lot here and a parking lot there. There used to be some good-looking home downtown. Well, Daddy, nobody wants to live downtown anymore. People want to live out by the, the shopping malls. Oh, Wesley Jenkins got himself a Taco Bell franchise. He'll make a mint. My, my, my. That's three Taco Bells. Hey. We're going to have to try that one of these days, Margaret. It must be good stuff if they need three of them. <laughs> you know that I've never tried a Big Mac. I'll have to try those two one of these days. Right. Everybody's getting rich all around you, and you two just sit here. Philip, you're wasting your breath. Daddy's not even listening to you when you're not used to having anything. Don't you want to be somebody? Philip, I think you've said enough. Well, money makes you somebody. You're sitting on a gold mine. Said the pimp to the prostitute. <laughs> Look, everybody, they started. Oh, Sue, would you get the porch lights? Oh, how beautiful. Sneaky bitch, can you believe that? Oh, hello, Philip. What's up? That sneaky bitch, Viola Whitman, offering Daddy a hundred thousand dollars for that house. That sneaky bitch. Philip, settle down. Now, what happened? <sighs> I just found out from a friend of mine who has a friend on the city council that the Hanks are trying to buy off that whole block, and the old people are sitting right in the middle of it. Well, so what did Viola do? Well, I'll tell you what she tried to do. She tried to screw us out of a hundred thousand dollars. That's what she did. 
The Hanks are offering two hundred thousand for any piece of property in that block. Why, that sneaky bitch! <laughs> I have never liked that one. Well, I've done my part. I had to call in some favors to get that information. Now it's up to you. Me? I think it's up to Mom and Daddy. What are you looking for? Oh, the estimate they gave us to paint the house. Well, if I've got this feeling that Daddy wouldn't sell for a million dollars. Seventeen hundred dollars. Too bad Medicare doesn't cover sick houses. Maybe two hundred thousand dollars will change their minds. And when you look at this, property taxes have gone triple since last year. I think you should be the one to tell the old people you were always Daddy's favorite. Is this Helen's or Philip's Sunday? Besides, this is your Sunday, Helen. Uh, you baked Philip a chocolate meringue pie last Sunday. Well, oh, my mind is gone with the wind. Well, you could always cry. About the only thing you can say for old age is that it gives you an excuse for everything. That's a hell of a thing to say, Helen. Well, it may be, but it's the truth and you know it. You know, they'd always give in just to shut you up. Well, I guess I should have been more like you. Do what I wanted, say what I wanted, no matter whose feelings I hurt. What are they trying to do? Get blood out of a turnip? Philip, we can't go this Sunday. Mark's got some of the Rotor-Rooter guys coming over to watch a baseball game. Christ, Helen, can't we find another job? Most people are in sales or are in banking. I hate telling people my brother-in-law's in shit. <laughs> How can we manage to pay them? I am not going to get Mark to miss that baseball game, and Daddy refuses to get the old black and white set fixed. I'm talking hundreds of thousands of dollars, and you're talking baseball. Well, I'm not covering for you again. You and Mark already owe me four Sundays with the old people. Besides, next week is Mama's birthday, and that would make three Sundays in a row. You know, it would be nice to have everybody together for your birthday. I wish all the kids could be here. Glad you reminded me. You know, I haven't gotten her a thing. When people get to be our age, they should forget about birthdays. Maybe we could go in together on a gift. Personally, I think they did a great disservice to people when they started attaching numbers to them. I can't think of anything good that came to a race of people when they had to be numbered. <laughs> Can you help me in the kitchen, man? You bet. Why don't you get off the damn floor and do the housework like you're supposed to? It's Philip. Did you tell him we're not going to the old people tomorrow? Is that Helen on the phone? Uh, she and Mark are trying to get out of going to the old people's. Helen, I think it would be a chicken thing to just not go to the old people's. Philip said you're a chicken shit, and I agree with him. <laughs> Helen, I did not say he was. Yeah, he's a wimp. Uh, Mark said you were. I heard it, and you can tell him I think he's a. Uh, 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 Philip says you're a low life bastard. Helen, <laughs> she's calling him names and blaming it on me. Tell that man you better watch who he calls names, especially somebody he owes money to. I didn't call him names. Helen, you and Mark owe me four Sundays with the old people. He says we owe him four Sundays with the old people. Well, how much is that worth? If you ask me, something should be done about the old people. You know, Sam, we haven't been up to that rest home to see Captain Hunt in a long time. Well, nobody asked your opinion. Helen! And do we work with them? Well, do something besides argue about it on the phone. And this Sunday business is getting out of hand. Helen, are you there? Mark says we should do something about the old people. You know, it would be fun to see the old codger again. I haven't had a good laugh in a long time. Mark says we should do something about the old people. Tell Mark, I think he's a, a, a low-life bastard. I have already called him that. Can't you think of something better? I wish he was helping me. Sue says she hopes he wasn't suggested an old folks' home. Philip, if you don't go this Sunday, I'll have to call and make up an excuse. We're having a sale at the lot, and I, I don't know how long it's going to last. Why don't you let me sell you a new car, Helen? Philip, we can't afford to buy a new car every year like you can. Well, you'll have lots of money if the old people sell the house. What makes you think they'll give us any of the money if they do sell? What would they do with all that money? It'll be our Sunday anyway. We could take out a loan on our inheritance. You know, Philip, Mark is right about one thing. You are a whip. You'll be sorry you talk to me like that, Helen. I may have a little surprise for you, sister. What are we going to do about the old people? Lie to them like you always do. I only lie to them because I don't want to hurt their feelings. You lie because you don't want to go over there any more than I do. Shame on us. Live next door to someone for 40 years and we can't even take that little trip up there to see him. Yeah, I miss him. I wish he'd never sold that home. I wonder if our old Plymouth can make the 50 mile round trip. I've had that car for 25 years. The young man asked me if I wanted to sell it only yesterday. He said it was a classic. I'll get it, Sam. Hello, Mama. It's me, Helen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
not to let you wheel yourself. Or to get excited. And to make sure you take your pills. You know what gets me excited? Everybody say, not to get excited. It makes me mad as hell. <laughs> and about taking pills, in those places they keep you numb. They joke you up till you're like a, a zombie. Yeah, I haven't taken a damn pill in two years. <laughs> out there didn't seem all that bad. Well, I was telling old Miriam Watkins what I was doing, and she decided to save hers. She was 92 and said she was tired of living around all those old people. <laughs> 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 and you get tired. Well, old Miriam finally saved up enough pills to do herself in. And it all worked out April the 1st. That's what I call a sense of humor. <laughs> 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 On March the 31st, she died peacefully in her sleep. <laughs> Seems the good Lord has a sense of humor himself. <laughs> These are Miriam and my pills. <laughs> Sam, take them and flush them down the cracker. Captain Hunt. Seeing you two again and Sam and I racing those kids tonight in that old Plymouth really make me excited. <laughs> and I found out that there's a lot of life left in this old boy yet and something else. Getting excited ain't all that bad. <laughs> <laughs> what is the police at cost? What if we had to call the children to come bail us out of jail? Racing those girls in that old Plymouth, you two nearly scared me to death. Well, I wasn't about to let those kids get away with calling us chicken. <laughs> chicken shit, Sam. <laughs> they called us old chicken shit. <laughs> Captain Hunt, you haven't changed. What do you mean I ain't changed? I'm blind as a bat, I can't walk, my ass hangs down lower than my knees. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had an election in 10 years, don't tell me all that. <laughs> After all these years, you still embarrass me. <laughs> but I have to admit, I missed it. Hmm. You embarrass me too, Margaret. Oh, I know. Dorothy used to talk to me about that. It wasn't that I didn't want to be affectionate. Hell, I just didn't know how to be. Sam, we'd have beat your young asses tonight if Margaret hadn't made a stop at the second factory fire. Right. <laughs> oh, wonderful, wasn't it? Wonderful to, to feel something. Yeah, it was wonderful. Why did you two let me have that second glass of wine? I get so silly, and I'm too old to be silly. <laughs> Hell, it's expected out of infants and old people. Everybody thinks it's cute. <laughs> bad, bad, bad. It makes me want to puke. <laughs> feel guilty about it. I get that from my mama. She would never let us have any fun. It was always work to be done. I think that's why I never asked my children to do anything. I didn't want them to have that guilty feeling. If parents didn't instill kids guilt in their children, who would they have to blame their rotten life on? <laughs> you ought to thank the old girl. Does anybody want to know how I felt? Well, I felt just like the first time you walked into my daddy's barbershop. With Mike Fenton. <clears throat> Poor Mike. I was so taken with her, and my heart was beating so fast that I ruined her friend's hair. <laughs> <laughs> he never forgave Sam. He maintained to the day he died that Sam had done that on purpose to get my attention. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, she was something. I got so scared, my heart started beating so fast. And I, my hands started shaking. I, before I knew, the next thing I knew, I'd cut a big chunk out of Mike's hair. <laughs> <laughs> and I got the giggles, which made Mike even angrier. I tried to hide behind one of those field and stream magazines. <laughs> oh, Mike was the epitome of vanity. And Sam had done what all his friends had wanted to do for years. Mess him up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good <laughs> Hey, 
you know something? I'm hungry for a change. I'll fix something. Sure it's good to see you all yeah. again. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 oh, Margaret. Uh, something with grease and salt. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the last time I done tasted grease and salt. <laughs> Captain, you know you're not going to get anything from me that you're not supposed to have. Oh, for God's sake, Margaret. <laughs> no jello. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, you married a hard woman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me get some. Oh, Sam. No, no. I know. Places and law offices. They're nice fellas. Sam, when we sold the old place nine years ago, we moved in with Lou and her family. And we felt in the way. The longer we stayed with them, the more we depended on them. Lou and Jerry had three kids, and when she got pregnant the fourth time, they'd be needing a room. So Dorothy and I decided right then that it was time for us to move out. So we went to the home. We didn't want them to resent us later. And Sam, you cannot blame them. You know, I sometimes want to thank my old daddy for running off and leaving me and my mama. I mean, I never knew him. You see, he saved me the grief of his old age and his death. It was a handsome house, wasn't it? People don't live in a house like that anymore. Greed has shrunk up. They jammed up like next to each other. They've got fences all around them like a fortress. My God, they could live around somebody for years and never really get to know who they are. Well, the Baxter's were good neighbors till they sold them to the lawyers. They got about three times what you sold to them for. <laughs> Margaret and I were hoping some nice family would buy our place and Fix it up and live in it and raise a family here. You know, a house stays alive like that. And this old house is dying around us. I noticed it can stand a coat of paint. And that ain't like you, Sam. Well, this house used to be the showplace of the whole neighborhood, and people would come for miles around to see your roses. Do you know how much it costs to get a house painted today? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like it used to be when all of us neighbors used to get together and and give each other a hand? Hmm. We ain't like we used to be either, Sam. <laughs> I'll give you the money. Oh, I couldn't let you do that. Damn you, Sam. I do one thing for you, and you come along and do two for me. To get even, I do two things for you, and you top me off by doing three. I don't think you wanted even things up. I think you always enjoyed being on top. Why don't you let me do something for you? The only fun I get anymore is doing things for Lou and the kids and scaring that guy at the home whose job it was to wheel me around in this damn contraption. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the strength of an ox and the mentality to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> but I envy his youth. Youth. Large, lusty lemon, youth, filled with grace, force, fascination. Do you know that old age may come after you with equal grace, force, and fascination? Walk with me. Yeah, he's the only poet I ever could stand. That old bastard could come out with some racy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Paint the house, Sam. Paint it a bright friggin' red. <laughs> <laughs> but it's gotten so big, it's a run down. I don't know if I can take care of it anymore. I was hoping one of the kids would want it. Bill, what do you do when you can't take care of it anymore? 
when you can't take care of yourself. Old friend, you either get excited or you save the pills. teach him some manners. Would you like a piece of cake, Debbie? Would you say no, ma'am, to your grandmother? No, ma'am. You'll have to forgive your granddaughter, Mama. She'd rather go to the movies than come to her grandmother's birthday party. So they can be boys. Take my word for it, Philip, and stop at one kid. <laughs> uh, I forget you've already been married, haven't you? Boys, it's none of your business. <laughs> We're all family here. What's wrong with saying that? It's better than staying in a relationship where you're both miserable. Maybe we'll be luckier, honey, in our marriage and with our kids. Oh, well, maybe you've got a secret I don't. Well, I was talking about his first marriage. Right? You can't fart without her thinking you're farting at us. <laughs> Pardon me at the table. I'm sorry, Sue. If I'm just a little sensitive, especially when it comes to the kids. Kids are all right. Leave them alone. They'll be okay. Yeah, like the way you handle Jason's smoking. Yes, Daddy, my little darling is smoking. I told his daddy, you know, he spends too much time in the bathroom. He says, leave him alone, he's just a neat kid. I say, no, nobody, sp nobody spends that much time in the bathroom. <clears throat> well, when he comes out, the entire place smells like right guard. I wasn't smoking. I found a pack of merits under your jockey shorts. <clears throat> At least you're smoking low time. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's not smoking marijuana. You read all the time where kids Debbie and Jason's age are smoking pot. It breaks your heart. I'd break their necks. He was just keeping them for somebody. Do you smoke? No, sir. That stuttles it. <clears throat> Told you. You know, I, I had my first taste of tobacco when I was about his age. And it came in the form of a long, green-looking cigar. And my mama didn't allow smoking in her house. So my daddy always kept a giant cigar hidden in one of my mama's Dresden vases. <laughs> and I found it. <laughs> now daddy used to sneak outside to the water set to smoke after dinner. I knew what he did out there because I watched him through a knot hole in the side of his shed. He sat down on this upside down tub and he stuck the cigar in his mouth and he lit it with a kitchen match that he struck on the seat of his britches. He looked so happy smoking that cigar that I was sure it must have been the best thing in the world. And I intended to try. <laughs> Daddy, you never told us that story. Well, I guess I never had a reason to, till now. <laughs> I know, you smoked it and got sick. You want people to tell us stories like that just to scare us. Shut up, Jason. Shut up or I'll take your cigarettes away. <laughs> Go on, Daddy. Well, Jason, it wasn't exactly like you said. But I did manage to find an opportunity to sneak Daddy's cigar out of that vase and into the wash shed. Now, I sat down on this upside-down tub and I 
chewed off the end of that cigar and spit it out just like my daddy did. That tobacco sure stung the tip of my tongue. <laughs> then I struck that match on the seat of my pants after several attempts, <laughs> and I had to hold that lighted match out about a foot from a nose to reach the end of it. Then I puffed, and I puffed, and I puffed. But I just couldn't keep it lit. I was beginning to learn that that was no ordinary cigar. Well, after much puffing and puffing, I guess I just got tired, and I slid down, and I went to sleep. <laughs> the last thing I remember was how cool the floor of that wash shed was, and how clean the bluing and starch smelled. <laughs> then my daddy picked me up, and he carried me into the house, and he put me to bed, and he never mentioned that cigar to me ever. <laughs> and I didn't start smoking until I went into the service. You didn't get punished? No, I didn't. Gee, that's a neat story. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I found out that day in my mama's wash shed that it took a mighty big man to smoke my daddy's cigar. Daddy, that's a, a great story. It's a beautiful story, Daddy. Mark, quit eating. You're going to weigh 300 pounds. Now look at Daddy. He hasn't gained a pound in years. He's perfect. I've always found perfection to be boring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why he married me. <laughs> Mama, you're perfect. Yes, Mama, you're perfect, too. Uh, I think I'm going to be sick. <laughs> I think it's time the kids went outside so we adults can have a talk. You just want us kids to go outside so you can talk dirty. Uh, no, dear. We haven't learned to use the words you use yet. Now go on. Get out of here. Go on, Jason. But, Mom, there's nobody to play with. Everybody's moved. I said to go on. Now go on. Grandma, can I use your telephone? Of course, sweetheart. Thank you. Ten minutes. But, Mom, I just wanted to tell you. Eight minutes. Oh, Kayla, I'm not expecting any calls. Oh, Mama, it's not... It's not the time, it's the attitude. You know, sometimes they just... Sorry. This conversation is going to be for adults. I think I'm going to check on Tyler. Well, you don't have to be excused, do you, Mark? Yeah, I think so, Sam. Nature calls. <laughs> well, if this one does, I guess I've been mean, too. No, no, Bill, no, no, you stay. Oh, this is family, Daddy. We wanted to discuss something that's important to us all. Mm -hmm. Your mom and me have decided that we're going to ask Captain Hunt to come and live with us. What? what? I haven't said yes, haven't I? But we're hoping he will. But Mama! I missed our poker games. Maybe I'll let you win one of those games, Sam. Well, how will you manage? I mean, you can barely take care of the place as it is now. I don't think we do too bad. Well, how are you going to get him up those rickety stairs at night? We'll turn the sitting room into a bedroom. <sighs> but I think the whole idea is ridiculous. Well, it's nothing to do with you, Captain. I just don't know if the old people are up to it. Will you stop referring to us as old people? <laughs> We're people who happen to be older than you, and that has to count for something. Why didn't you discuss this with us? That's what we're doing now, Helen. Well, we were hoping you would sell this old place and move into a new or smaller place, not taking a border. We're not taking in a border. We're taking in a friend. Oh, Daddy, you know what I mean. I mean, with Jeffrey and Amy so far away and our families taking up so much of our times. A, a, a nice small apartment where you wouldn't have to worry about anything. I mean, you wouldn't have to worry about the lawn or the plumbing or, or anything. The, the landlord takes care of that. And, and Captain Hunt could get an apartment next to yours. Apartments like that are expensive. Well, you wouldn't have to worry about money. Why, Philip? Have you come into some money? <laughs> Sell this house? I, I always thought I wanted to die in this house. Oh, good God, you're going to talk about dying, aren't you? We talk about it, Helen. For crying out loud, Daddy. We're not crying about it, Phil. We talk about it. You know, it does cross your mind when you reach a certain age. You can't just shut it out as if it's something that can happen to everybody else in the world. So we discuss it. This conversation is morbid. No, it's honest. Selling this house would be morbid to us. All of you children were born in this house. It means a lot to us. We hoped it would mean something to you, too. Oh, it does. It means worrying whether you're going to make it up those rickety stairs at night. It means worrying whether that back porch is so rotten one of you is going to fall through. The roof leaks, you put a pot under it. A faucet breaks, you tie a rag around it. The hot water heater breaks. You boil water for your baths. This house is falling down around you. That's what it means to us. You ever 
notice, <clears throat> you don't hear children in this neighborhood anymore. Not in this neighborhood. They've all grown up and moved away. We had some good neighbors for a while, bought a hunt old place next door. They had children. But they sold out. They made a fortune, four times what they paid Hunt for it. You know, my daddy made that chair you're sitting in for nothing but a knife in his bare hand. That's real deer hide, taken from a buck he shot the penis. It used to be the natural color of wood, and Helen came over one Sunday and paid it. I haven't said it since. <laughs> well, times have changed, Daddy. Uh, nobody has to make things like that anymore. We've come a long way from that. And from those 75 cent haircuts you used to give in your old shop. You see this haircut? It cost me $15. My, my, that might. <laughs> Your mama cut my hair. I remember how you used to scout me and I'd be too embarrassed to go to school. All the other kids had long hair and they called me white wall. Well, when I pay $15 for a haircut, I'll be damn sure I get it cut the way I want. Way back when I started cutting hair with my daddy, we had to cut a lot of hair to make $15. Eventually, I had to charge as much as $5, but long hair and the styles put me out of business. I guess I just got tired of waiting for long hair to go. It seemed like the world changed when people's hair got longer. Well, that's it, Daddy. The world changed, and we have to change with it. They even tore down that old hotel where he used to cut hair. There's nothing there now but a big hole in the ground. What a shame. Why couldn't they leave it up till they needed to tear it down? Look, you're practically downtown. You're sitting in the shadow of the Capitol. Those Yankees are freezing their asses off up north, and they're bringing all their money down here. So the Yankees are going to end up owning the South anyway. They just had to wait about 125 years to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Philip, if we were to sell this place, is there anything you might want? We couldn't take everything to a smaller place. Oh, good God, no. And don't ask Sue, that she'd take everything. I like chrome and glass, you know, modern stuff, like in the magazines. It means you've made it, you're somebody. You can have a garage sale, pick up another thousand. A thousand dollars here and a thousand dollars there? What would your mom and me do with all that money? I could invest it for you, you could live off the interest. Philip, are you in financial trouble again? Well, I'm going to pay you back that two thousand you loaned me. Don't worry about that. No, no, I'm not worried about that two thousand dollars. Well, yes, sir. I, I, I'm overdrawn at the bank and, uh, well, the, the credit card. And, um, well, it, it's the back child support, Daddy. Uh, Louise is coming down on my ass. I don't know. It just seems like no matter what I do, I'm just one step ahead of Hell, Daddy, she could throw my ass in jail. How much? I need several thousand, quick. Mama, would you stop so I can talk to you? If we worry about you, you get upset. If we don't worry about you, you get upset. I don't know what to do anymore. I don't think your daddy and I are upset. We just need time to talk about it. You can't expect us to make up our mind just like that about something that will affect the rest of our lives. We've got deep roots here. This is our place. Somewhere it feels good to come home to. Mama, I understand. I do. No, really, stop. But we're talking about a hundred thousand dollars. A hundred thousand dollars. That is a lot of money. We're not used to a lot of money. I know. You know, I stay up at nights wondering how I'm going to put Jason and Debbie through college. And sometimes I think Mark doesn't give a damn. If we sold the house, Helen. Oh, no, Mama. We wouldn't take any money. But a loan, maybe. Well, you see, Mark's been offered a partnership in, in this business with the man he used to work for when we first got married. And, where we would need an investment. How much investment? $10,000. Mama, you could talk to Daddy. Well, if it would mean that much to you. Yes. Well, you see, Mark would feel like somebody with his own business. You know, I, I don't think he has a lot of confidence in himself, and sometimes I don't think he's very happy being married to me. And it just terrifies me. I'll finish the dishes. 
I'll leave that. I'll, I'll do it later and get me something to do. Mama, would you let me do it? You know, you never let me do anything around here. You know, I don't think I ever made up a bed until I left this house. <laughs> Fact is, I still don't make beds. <laughs> Fact is, I'm a lousy housekeeper. Fact is, I don't know how Mark puts up with me. I'll, uh, I'll pick that part for the toilet up for you tomorrow. That would be sweet of you, Mark. You know, Helen and Philip are right. This old place would be too much for me to take care of. Do you mind? Oh, oh I, I better get Sue and the baby. I, I have to be at the lot early in the morning. Where's Helen? In the kitchen. This is going to be harder than I thought. You two are crazy if you think Sam's going to sell this place. They'll probably make them build that bank right over the top of this house. Yeah. Mark? Yeah, I've got Mark. Are you busy? No. I need to ask a favor. What's up? I can't get the chair in the door to the john. Hey, I shouldn't have had that beer. No problem. I'm coming. <laughs> Call Rodo Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, I mean. You know something? What? After all these years, I still desire you. I still get this swarm of butterflies just sitting next to you. Wouldn't the children be surprised to know that they're still passing in the old people? <laughs> <laughs> well, here I am being romantic and you get hysterical. No. <laughs> you just reminded me of something Philip said when he was in the fifth grade. Remember? We laughed about it for years. He came home from school one day and he said he had found out what the F word meant. <laughs> and he looked at Sam Jr. And he looked at Helen and he said, Do you mean you and Daddy did that three times? <laughs> <laughs> and then he came up to me and said, You and Mommy did it again, didn't you, Daddy? <laughs> I plan to give this to you earlier. Oh, Sam. It's a ring of life. See, there's one stone for each of the children. This is the most beautiful gift you've ever given me. But saying there's six stones. Yeah, that one's for me, your first child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the two sapphires are for Amy and Philip. The animals for Helen. The opals for Jeffrey and Sam Jr. God bless him. Was the diamond. I always thought it was strange that the Navy got his birth date wrong on his death certificate. He was a good boy. No matter how hard you try to be impartial, the firstborn is always special like the ring. All the stones are precious, but Sam Jr. is a diamond.
he's not here by dinner, go ahead and start with that. And I'm sorry, he's at that lot almost every night. I never know when to expect him home. Philip knows how punctual his daddy is about dinner. Seven o'clock on the dot without fail. Mm -hmm. I've never told you this, Mama Fletcher, but I've always loved this silver. My Aunt Nettie gave this to Sam and me for a wedding present. Some of the pieces are missing. The children used to use the big spoons to dig with under the house. <laughs> I've been wanting someone to crawl under there and see if they could find the missing pieces. Well, I changed Holler's stopper and he went right back to sleep. Oh, he's such a good baby. Completely opposite from Philip. He was restless from the first moment I felt him kick. And he kicked the hardest of all my children, and he gave me the most trouble at birth. <laughs> been looking at all these things as Helen and Philip call them. It's funny how our lives are reduced to objects. Man's history for hundreds of thousands of years just reduced to little fragments and pieces of things. This is something I tried to instill in my students, that their art may one day be our link with history. It would be nice to have a piece of history. Well, you do now. It's yours. Oh, Mama Fletcher, I couldn't take it. That's what I said when Sam's mother forced it on me. <laughs> <laughs> but I've never regretted taking it. I do regret hiding it away for fear of breaking it. It's yours and no arguments. It would make me very happy for you to have it. Fletcher, you know, it's breaking my heart to think that you may have to dismantle your life. Is that what happens to us when we get old? You know, I used to find these boxes of old family photographs. I was prowling around in those junk stores, and I couldn't imagine how they ended up there. Could it be nobody wanted them? Do families just end? Just cease to be nothing but boxes of old pictures for strangers to prowl through? It frightens me. That's why I want you to have the vase. So it won't end up with strangers. It's a happy piece, and I, I want it to belong to someone who will cherish it. What about Helen? Knowing Helen should probably use it for a doorstop. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably better than never using it at all. I guess when you grow up being told you mustn't touch something, it loses its joy. All these things. I've never been able to enjoy because I prize them too highly. I have some lovely pillowcases that my mother hand crocheted. I never used them. Now they're so fragile with age, they're no use to anyone anymore. I should have slept on them, dreamed on them, instead of hiding them away in some dark old closet. <coughs> Maybe my daughter's fortunate. She refuses to get attached to things. You're going to sell the house, aren't you? Well, it's grown so big. Or maybe it's just that Sam and I are shrinking. <laughs> they say that happens when you get old. You shrink. <laughs> I think if we could handle it, we'd stay. Like two pioneers holding on to our land. Maybe Helen and Philip are right. Maybe we are being selfish. Oh, no. I refuse to believe that. You know what it is? It's this damn city. God, it makes me so mad. On one end of town, the university is buying up people's homes to expand, and big business is buying up on the other end. Another meeting, right here in the middle. God, this wonderful, sleepy little town I grew up in, now, I don't even recognize anymore. And the whole town's covered with litter. You never used to see litter in this town. <coughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I guess it's so rarely I get to give my opinion. <laughs> when I do, I run off at the mouth. I just want you to know I'm on your side. Oh, I know you are, dear. I put the garbage out, Dorothy. Are you happy, Sue? Are you? Happy. It's got a lot to do with luck, you know? You know, when I was little, and I'd hear somebody say that they were happy, I'd think how lucky they were. 
I've never been a lucky person on the fledger. I want you to keep this for me until it's safe to bring home. <laughs> I'm going to go check on the baby. I, I think I'll lay down. I haven't really gotten used to Philip's new water bed. <laughs> Sue? Yes, ma'am. I'm so glad you're part of our family. I know.
It's not a word by itself, it's powerless. It's a thought behind it, make it a bad word. You understand? You know, I think we're both in trouble. If you don't cut the grass, your mom is going to be angry with you. If I send you home without letting you cut the grass, I'll be in trouble with you. Does that make any sense to you? I can't disobey your mother's orders any more than you can. And it's true. I'm getting too old to mow the grass around here anymore. And your grandmother, Captain Hunt, have asked me to find somebody to do it for me. To pay somebody to do it for me. But I've been too stubborn about that. Me and that old Moore have been together for a long time. But if you'd like the job, I'd rather pay you money than somebody I don't know. How much? <laughs> well, I thought we'd give it a try first. Then we'd talk about money. Maybe you could tell me how much it's worth. And you see, it doesn't have a motor. You have to push it. Oh, but it'll make muscles. It'll make muscles. <laughs> hey, let me see your arm. Okay, make a muscle. Hmm. Jason, I guarantee you'll have bigger muscles once you mold with my magic muscle making machine. <laughs> Stop bullshitting the boy, Sam. <laughs> do a good job. Be proud of whatever you do. Even cutting grass. Be the best damn grass cutter in the world. And I get the job if I do it right? Sure you can. Well, can I get started now? You bet. But remember to keep your toes and fingers out from under the blade. That's it. That's the boy. That's the boy. Sam, we need to remember that pride is not only one of the great sins, it's a great motivator. I think you're right, Bill. <laughs> hey, Margaret, come and see how wonderful Jason is mowing the grass. Why, he's going to be the best darn grass mower in the world. Yoo-hoo! Anybody home? Oh, hello, Violet. Hello, Margaret, Sam. Why, Captain Hutt, how are you? I had to do all that for yourself, Violet. Well, Sam, as usual, you've been working in the yard. Would you like some lemonade, Violet? Oh, no, thank you, Margaret. I'm on a diet. No sugar. No nothing. <laughs> you look fine to me. Oh, you always were a charmer, Bill. How's that new car? Oh, that old thing's just a rental. By all of you, is this a uh, friendly visit or a business? Well, I try to make business friendly, Sam. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I am here on friendly business. <laughs> I've been authorized by all the owners of the block to talk to you. You're the only one standing in the way of the Hanks boys purchasing this block. And they want the entire block or nothing. So that's why you wanted this old place. Well, you can't blame a girl for trying, Sam. We haven't had time to make up our minds, Viola. Big business moves fast, Sam. This is America. Poor today, rich tomorrow. What if they don't want to sell? Well, then a lot of people are going to miss out on the American dream. Most people on this block bought their property as an investment, and if you don't sell, they're going to lose their investment. Most of the people who own this block don't live on it. <laughs> well, to be perfectly frank, I own a piece of this rock myself. <laughs> I bought the northwest corner lot, and if this block sells, I'm buying me a cranberry Mercedes. <laughs> well, you folks could take a trip to Bermuda, buy a home in Florida, visit Disney World. <laughs> Go to Las Vegas and see Wayne Newton. <laughs> <laughs> All the things Americans want to do in their golden years. <laughs> What's this? It's a friendly petition signed by all the owners in the block. Our, our kids have signed this too. Well, yes. As uh, potential owners, their signatures are merely a gesture of good faith. They have discussed the potential here, haven't they? An office building, a new bank. Well, this used to be a neighborhood of neighbors. Now all around us they're ripping up people's homes and building banks. My God, doesn't this city have enough banks? <laughs> they're putting up another bank over where the Alexanders used to live. Where are they going to get all the money to put in all those banks? Why, for people like you, Sam. 
least they did give you a figure, didn't they? Well, I guess uh, something about 200000 About 100000 more than you offered. <laughs> well, I'm afraid they were slightly over-enthused. But 150 maybe two, with my commissions, etc. How much income tax are we going to have to pay on that much money? If, if the government takes it off, what good would it do us to sell? Oh, if, at your age, and if this property's never been sold before, you won't have to pay the government deadly squat. <laughs> How much are you expecting to make on this deal? Mm -hmm. Well, to show good faith, if the Fletchers sell, I'll forgo my commission. And there, as we say in the real estate business, goes the cranberry Mercedes. <laughs> And what if we told you to cram the cranberry Mercedes? <laughs> well, now you were happy enough when I bought your house. And you turned right around and sold it for two to three times as much. Well, that is what we call in the real estate business. The damn Mercedes. <laughs> Does um, Captain Hunt speak for both of you? No, I don't. But. I speak for a lot of ignorant people, including myself, who got ripped off in this town with the likes of you. It is the likes of me who are helping make something of this town. Oh, shit, you're making something for yourself. Two, three thousand dollars to sell something that wasn't even yours in the first place? Yeah, that's fascism. <laughs> well, <laughs> do you have anything to say? You could certainly do a lot better than this old place. We're not 80s people, Viola, who float from one new apartment to another. We're 30s people. One roof, if you're lucky. Well, Sam, if you prefer to live in a time warp, it's in your hands. I'll get that goddamn cranberry Mercedes, Captain Hunt, whether this property sells or not. Hell, there is a killing to be made in this town of killing. <laughs> now, there are two ways the economy better itself. One way is not to have enough of something. The price goes up, right? The second way is to have too much of something. Lots of those buildings are going up, and they never expect them to be people by anything but dust. Tax write-offs. So we sell our home so all those investors can make a killing with Viola calls it. And they'll demolish it and all the other houses on this block. And put up another big empty building for some asshole's tax shelter. <laughs> <laughs> we could give the kids the money they need and invest the rest. And then we'll need another place. Any way you look at it, you're going to be living in a smaller place with no room for Santa's roses or your big dining room suit in the house there. In the place you may have a potted rose or two on your little two before deck. And you'll be eating off one of those damn Formica cupboard counters in your space saving kitchen. <laughs> Who the hell are they saving all that space for? <laughs> If she wanted to be here, she'd be here. I'm here. It's the sweetest thing. Captain Hunt was holding Tyler, and they both fell asleep. You know, there's something almost healing about babies. That's how I feel about the Earth. My daddy used to say we got our strength out of the Earth. 
that we pull some kind of energy from it. I think that's why I can't keep my hands out of the ground. Sometimes I forget what it's like to walk on dirt or grass. Almost everything's covered with cement or asphalt. Maybe that's why people are always complaining about feeling bad. Maybe all that cement is sealing us off from the energy the earth gives us. Yeah, maybe so, because you know, when I was a kid, I used to like to roll around in the grass. I mean, I like the way it smelled and tasted. Like a honeysuckle. And you pull that stem through, just to taste that little drop of sweetness on your lips. Did you ever do that, Philip? No, I never did that. <laughs> no one's never wanted to get dirty. <laughs> He'd make up all kinds of excuses to get out of anything that had to do with dirt. <coughs> Are we boring you, Philip? I think Philip is put out with a suit. <laughs> I'm not put out with anybody. I just don't find the conversation very interesting. And yes, I am bored. Okay. You want the truth? I'm bored. I'm bored with all this talk about earth and grass and roses and about how the world is being destroyed by cement and about what kind of person I was. You know, I try to live in the present. Now, not yesterday. I'm not interested in what happened yesterday. I'm only interested in how I'm going to survive the latest disaster of the day. You know, Daddy, you and Mama do nothing but sit here and talk about how good the old times were. Daddy, when is the last time you've been out of this house? We went to pick up Captain Hunt last week. 25 miles. Okay, uh, when's the last time you were 50 miles from this town? 100 miles? You know, I hate to disillusion you, Daddy, but there is a world outside this house. Don't you ever want to worry about never seeing any of it? Wouldn't you like to know if there really is such a place as Paris, France? Sam, could you help me in the kitchen, please? I better go help your mama. Coming, Margaret. Wouldn't you like to see if there really is a Colosseum in Rome? You know, Philip, I could go back to work. Mama Fletcher said she'd be glad to keep Tyler. But most families have two working parents. It's the only way they can make it. I'm too far gone. Too far gone. Tyler deserves to be with his mama. We're so much in debt. And to be truthful, I'd like to get out of the house. I don't feel comfortable in that house. Can't just wait until the, the, the Viola has made the old people another offer? If, if mama and daddy sold this house... But you can't depend on that, Philip. It's not fair. You're going to have to do this on your own. Look, call Louise. Tell her what the problem is, then do the same thing at the bank. They want their money more than they want you in jail. I'm going to check on your bank. Just, I know I'm not the easiest man to live with, but just hold on and I'll make it right. I swear I'll make it good. But to make it good, do we have to hurt Mom and Daddy Fletcher? in the dining room, Philip. Uh, can we wait for a while? <clears throat> <laughs> My God, she got that damn cranberry Mercedes. <laughs> 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 Maybe made in Germany, but it was paid for with Iranian money. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the prettiest thing you ever laid your eyes on? Cranberry. <laughs> See, I painted my nails to match. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Looks like you're going someplace special. Oh, yes, I'm going downtown to the new opening of that hotel, and the mayor and the city council, and everybody's going to be there. Viola got her cranberry Mercedes, Daddy. Um, how's your van, Philip? Oh, I had to let the van go back. Uh, the finance company repossessed it. They sent this gorilla out to the lot, and he demanded the money or the van. <coughs> That's too bad. Yeah. 
dug up all of Daddy's roses for nothing. Well, you know, Philip, there's a reason for everything. Why else would I be here in my cranberry Mercedes? <laughs> like the fairy godmother, oh. I bring hope. I bring cheer. I spread goodwill. I spread cash. <laughs> Money. Wars have been fought over it. People have killed for it. Some fall in love because of it. Some fall out of love because of the lack of it. <laughs> it can heal the unhealthy. It can bring happiness to the unhappy. It can make an ugly person beautiful. <laughs> Money, the religion of the 80s. <clears throat> $300,000. That's over a quarter of a million dollars. Manna from heaven right out of the sky and into your bank account. Daddy, what does that mean? You're not saying no. No. I just can't believe it. $300,000 for a house I paid $12,000 for 45 years ago. Well, there you go talking about the past again. Come on, Daddy, get with it. Only a fool would turn down this offer Sam? A damn fool. You know the Hanks think you're holding out on them and they don't like being held over a barrel. If there's any barreling to be done they're usually the ones doing it. Only a damn fool, huh? Oh well no daddy you're not a fool and then look how far you've come from those 75 cent haircuts you used to get. Well think of Margaret. She's been a good wife and mother and now's your chance to give her all the things she's always wanted. There's something you want you don't have? I mean, is there something I haven't given you that you've asked for? Well, there was that power lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> anything else? I can't think of anything. Honest? Honest. Then tell the Hanks we'll let them know in a week. Daddy? Mama? You're making a lot of people angry, you know that? Nobody in his right mind would turn down this offer. Oh, I run across people like you and Margaret every once in a while. Stubborn. Afraid to walk out of their own houses. Afraid they're going to fall off the end of the earth. Well, the world's round, Sam. Round. Well, I'm sorry, Philip. Maybe in a few years, we can do business. Well, I hate to leave such charming company, but I have to pick up my date. He's very young and impatient. My old, I've been wondering, how did you get into this business of buying people's homes? Well, I used to be an actress, Margaret. And one of the roles I played was Little Mary Sunshine. And one day a friend talked to me about how much money there was in real estate. And I thought, hell, why not? Who wouldn't buy a house from Little Mary Sunshine? <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry, son. Yeah. Well, so am I. money you saved to put me through college. Just answer me that. I think I have a right to know. You know, I deserve better than I got. Sam Jr. was put through college and so was Amy. How come I always got the shitty end of the state? There was no money, Philip. We simply didn't have it. Sam Jr. didn't get the scholarship he was promised his last year. Then you, you, you lied to me and you said you'd never lie. We had hoped to save enough by the time you needed it. I might have made something of myself if I'd finished college. I, I wasn't smart enough to work and go to school. I knew it and, and you both knew it. So you gave it to your darling Sam Jr. Well, a lot of good back then, he's dead. Well, that, you're not being fair. I'm fair? Well, that's the trouble with me. I've always been too fair. Don't you see, Sue, it's happening again. They're doing it to me again. This is hell on Sunday, but I'm here. Good old faithful Philip. Philip the Whip is here. I never lied to you and not come on my Sundays. Well, where's Amy? Now, why isn't she here? And where's Jeff? We just don't think selling the house would help. Sam, 
Do you think we should reconsider? You know, Margaret, I can't remember when we've done something where we weren't motivated by what we thought the kids were going to get out of it. Even Sundays. It's what Philip likes to eat and what Helen doesn't like to eat. And we're called selfish. Maybe I am being pig-headed and stubborn. And maybe once, just once in my life, I'm enjoying it.
I'm sorry. I'm always sorry. How about it won't happen again? I can't promise you that. God damn it, do you want me to lie to you? It's like you said, Mama. You don't want to lie to me. No, honey, I don't want to lie. I'll be waiting at home. You know, Helen, if you just fix yourself up like you did before we got before we got married, it's it's hard for me to remember. I just want to know what it was. I just want to know what it was. Come on, dude. Paper. I've never been without them. <laughs> Here they are, all ready for your signatures, all nice and legal. Nice for you, maybe. Well, what made you change your mind, Sam? Somebody is always trying to pull you up by the roots. Do you know what happens to something when it's pulled up by the roots? I only pull up the weeds, Bill, so the good stuff can survive. Just like Helen and Philip said, it, it would be there someday anyway. And now you're really talking like old people. And it's a home. All they say was what they had and what they gave up. Makes me want to puke. <laughs> <laughs> especially, especially when everybody that they gave everything up for didn't give a damn about them in the first place. Wild the herd Miriam son bragging about all that he was going to buy when his mama died. Made me want to double puke. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it were my family, I'd tell him to kiss my gorgeous ass. <laughs> well, it will be after my operation. <laughs> <laughs> you see, when I divorced my husband, I also divorced my kids. I told them to get out there and make something of themselves. Because when I die, what's left is going with me, like some damned Egyptian princess. <laughs> well, that's what you and Margaret should do, Sam. Take this money and say to hell with everybody else. But you can't do that, can you? No, you have to continue that great American tradition known as parental sacrifice. It's not always bloodless, you know. Well, here are the five checks you asked for. <laughs> oh, Barry Hanks did not like being gotten out of bed this time of morning. But he's glad it's over, and so am I. Well, I'd love to stick around, but I have a feeling this is a private affair. Oh, by the way, 
If I were you, I'd start looking for a place to live. This whole thing comes down in a couple of weeks. Well, that didn't take long. <laughs> Daddy, Viola said that you and Mama did it. son. <laughs> it's just life. <laughs> Jason! <laughs> yeah, Grandpa? Jason, I'm giving you this check for $10,000 for your education. Wow! Daddy! Now, if you want to lend that money to your daddy or your mama, I see to it they sign a promissory note with a going interest so that you'll have the money back in time for college. Thank you, Grandpa. You bet. Debbie? Yes, Grandpa? Debbie, I'm giving you this check for $10,000 for your college education. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, you're going to need your money a lot sooner than Jason is, and so my advice to you is don't lend it to anybody. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well, what about me, Daddy? Philip, I didn't get anything. Well, I have something for you, Philip. <clears throat> But this is only two thousand. It's not enough. You got three hundred thousand. It's the money we had saved for your college, Philip. We wanted you to have what was yours. You said that two thousand dollars changed your life, so maybe it'll help you now. <laughs> As for your other problems, Philip, you'll have to work those out yourself. Well, what about Tyler? Uh, Jason and Debbie both got money. We thought about that. Sue? Yes, ma'am. This is for Tyler's education. We had it made out to you. It's $10,000. Thank you both. <coughs> Debbie. Is there any way I could borrow Tyler's money like Helen can Jason's? <laughs> I'm afraid not. Well, I have to appear before Judge Holt in the morning, and I may, may have to spend up to two months in jail. When you bought that new van, Philip, instead of paying your child support, you lost me. Well, Louise doesn't need that money, Daddy. Her family's loaded. It was a principal. You owed them. They were your kids, just as you said we owe, you owed us. Well, come on, Sue. I have to spend some time at the lot in the morning before my hearing. Come on, you guys, we got summer school. Oh, oh gosh. Hello, uh, Phil? Yes, sir. We have some unfinished business, son. Oh, what's that, Daddy? A sum of $2,000 you owe your mom and me. Uh, I think you're able to take care of that check now. Well, <laughs> 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 right. I, I, I sign it right now, Daddy, but I don't have a pen with it. Here you go. <laughs> Uh, Philip? Yes, my pen. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. Well, have you two given any thoughts to where you live? Yes. We thought we'd spend six months with you and six months with Philip. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey out there! The station's gone off the air. What do we do now? Oh hell, Bill, we get excited. <laughs> You know what? I built this house. It took 15 hours to fly from one end of this country to the other. Today, men are walking through the heavens. I guess it's time for a change. They'll tear it down, won't they? Yes. They call it progress. Progress? Hell, makes me want to puke. <laughs> 